Hello, everyone. My name is Mark. I am a stock market jobber, or at least that's what I like to call myself. I'm a former institutional trader. I was the head of trading at three different money managers, institutional money managers. Um, I traded directly for Mario Gabelli. I traded directly for Steve Cohen. I was a market maker. So I've been around the block a few times, and now I just want to teach people about the stuff I learned with my experience. So we're going to just take a couple minute look here at Tesla because there's a lot to potentially learn here. All right. Now, one of the keys of trading is that we have to understand what levels are important and we have to understand what trends are important and we have to understand what the momentum is. Now, Tesla is moving higher than it has been over the last few weeks. I think there's a good chance that when it gets up to around 167, it runs into resistance and either stalls out or reverses. Now, why would I say that? Well, back here in November, 167 was a support level. Now, a lot of times levels that were support can convert into resistance. How does that happen? Well, there's it's due to buyer's remorse. When we look at a chart, we're looking at investment psychology, okay? And charts are not these just random ambiguous things. They show us the supply and demand picture, at least if they're viewed right, and they show us psychology. So the reason why support could turn into resistance is because of buyer's remorse. There are people who bought here who, assuming they still held their shares when the price went lower, a lot of these people come to regret their decision. They're remorseful, uh, remorseful buyers. And they tell themselves, you know what, I made a mistake. I want to get out of this, but I'm only going to do so if I can get out for the same price that I bought it at. That way I can get out at break even. So remorseful buyers placing sell orders could convert support into resistance. We can see it on a lot of different charts. You can almost even see it here. Support here became resistance here. All right, so that's that. So that would be my short-term price target. I think that that's pretty cool. Effect. That's the curtain. Now, I want to show you this down here. This is Tesla going back to the beginning, 10 years ago, back in 2011, when they went public. When the vast majority of the time a market is within its a market or a stock or a crypto or whatever, security stays within its typical or historical or average trading range or what would be. If we get well above that, we call it overbought. And if we get well below it, we call it oversold. This is important because what things that are overbought or oversold tend to reverse. They tend to revert back to the average. A lot of Wall Street trading systems and styles or funds are based on this concept of reversion to the mean. So back here last November of 21, this year was the most overbought that Tesla had ever been in its history. I know it's kind of hard to see. It, it almost got it there, but even that was a really good chance time to sell. The stock was like at 65 and it went down to probably about 25. But this was the most oversold that it, I'm sorry, overbought that the stock has ever been in, ever been. And where was that? Right up here at the very top. So I know hindsight's 2020, but this was a screaming sell signal. All right, now let's advance or fast forward to just recently. Down here, this was the most oversold Tesla has ever been. So when something is oversold, there's a good chance it goes higher, and that's what happened here. We went from about 110 to where we are now, 158, and really a matter of just about three weeks. So remember, overbought and oversold things tend to reverse. Now I'm going to go through one more thing here. And these are the importance of price levels. So just how we saw that there's a good chance that support could become resistance, resistance tends to become support. This is the opposite. This is due to remorseful sellers. People sell, and when the price goes higher, a lot of these investors regret their de decision to do so, and they tell themselves that they're going to buy their shares back, but only if they can get them for the same price they sold them at. So if there's enough of these remorseful sellers placing buy orders, the level that was resistance could turn into support. Now, let's fast forward to recent times. This is what we call market memory. A lot of times, the, the, these important price levels can retain their importance for a, for a long time. It could be weeks, months, even years. I have even some that are decades, which I can't explain. 
Uh, if you look at a chart of Bristol Myers Squibb, for example, it peaked out in uh, 74 in 1999, and it peaked out at 74 in, I think, 2015. So we're talking about a 17 or 18 year difference there. But anyway, a lot of times stocks find support at former support levels. And keep in mind, we just looked that we just looked and saw how oversold it was. It was the most oversold in its history, and it got to a level that had been support. Stocks that are oversold and get to support tend to bounce, and that is what happened here. All right. So again, I know hindsight is 2020, but this was a pretty obvious um, buy, and I believe I've we've talked about that here at stockmarketjobber.com. So please subscribe to our our YouTube channel here. Let us know if you want any push notifications. Visit our website, stockmarketjobber.com. And uh, just remember, the most important thing to focus on are the levels, the trends, and the momentum. That's what successful traders do. Thank you, everybody. Have a good afternoon.